Hi there, Charlie here, Communications Manager for Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rockland County, and this is my pet project, Good Work New York, a podcast where we're talking about all the good work that happens here in Rockland County, the Hudson Valley, and New York State. And today I have with me a very special person. Our guest today is a Cornell professor. Say hello, Don. Hi, folks, and uh, it's great to have this opportunity to chat with you. And Don, can you introduce yourself and say what you actually do? Sure. I'm a professor in the horticulture section of the School of Integrative Plant Science at Cornell. Um, I teach a number of courses uh, to undergraduates and graduate students. I direct a graduate program in public garden leadership. Um, and I conduct research on the human benefits of time in nature. That's great. And that's actually what I am interested in hearing more about today. On research.cornell.edu, which is a great site where all of the latest research that's happening at Cornell University is sort of showcased for the public, there was a recent article about your work, and I wanted to know more. So you've looked at studies that help pair the idea of being in well, being outside in the wilderness and better well-being. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And I'll start with a bit of a clarification. Um, I feel that the benefits that we all derive from being out in nature doesn't require being out in wilderness. And uh, one can be in a park, in a botanical garden, arboretum, a large green field, and all of these will provide benefits to people. So what I've been doing over the past several years is getting involved in studies that look at different uh, periods um, in childhood and maturing and how individuals in each of these age groups benefit from nature. So, for example, I'm part of a project uh, which is funded by the Atkinson Center here on campus, which is looking at both the logistics of introducing regular nature exploration times uh, periods into elementary school classrooms, and then is also looking at how such nature exploration periods can really positively impact uh, student behavior and even academic achievement. Great. And so now your research is looking at youth and nature, and it's really, I think, a very important piece. And especially for us here in Rockland, we're very partially suburban, partially urban. You are working with someone about uh, looking at how, what keeps people from participating in natural spaces in urban settings, right? That's right. A colleague at the College of William and Mary, Dr. Dorothy Ives, and I are looking at what are the primary barriers that have typically kept young urban people of color from spending more time in nature, in parks, other green spaces. And what we've been finding based on extensive interviewing we've done with community leaders in uh, three upstate New York and two Virginia cities is that it's a combination of parks being too far uh, away from where young people are living in their apartments, Uh, parks often being deemed unsafe uh, by their parents, whether that is truly accurate or not, that's the perception. Um, In some cases, being out in nature, being considered uncool and not uh, an appropriate activity for teens. And um, as you and I were chatting about um, uh, earlier, just the prevalence of social media, video games, uh, screens uh, in all of their various uses can 
serve to uh, preclude uh, teens actually going out into nature, which is too bad because all of us benefit from such activity. Right. Now, being that we are on social media at the moment, I have to ask, is there any way that maybe social media could help bridge those gaps for the urban youth? Could maybe someone go out and live stream a hike? Would that possibly give any benefit to them? Yeah, I think that there are positive ways that social media can be used if used properly. So uh, another of the roles that I play here at Cornell is uh, directing our Nature Rx program, um, whose focus is to get members of our student body to spend time out in nature to improve their overall mental and, in some cases, physical well being. One component of the Nature Rx program is a website, naturerx cornell.edu that uses GPS location to direct uh, users to the nearest natural area or landscaped area. And what we're really hoping to achieve through that website is to have students especially, but certainly also staff and even faculty here at Cornell to get over the mindset that oh yes, I've heard nature is good for me, but it's too far away, it takes too much time. We're able to show through this website that in fact, wherever you are on the Cornell campus, nature is within five minutes walk of, of your current location. And likewise, as you said, I think social media can be used uh, for Instagram, people can post beautiful photos of themselves in nature, uh, TikTok, they can post tiny videos of cavorting in nature. So there are ways of using social media in positive uh, approaches, but I don't think it's a substitute for going out into nature. Definitely. So your research is in uh, sort of mid-stage right now. You've done some of the quantitative stuff and you're doing the qualitative stuff and writing papers and they haven't been published yet, right? That's right. We have several papers in the mill. Um, we have one that is actually uh, hopefully about to be accepted with revisions that in which colleagues and I uh, conducted what is called a scoping review. We looked at an enormous amount of literature narrowed it down to 14 papers around the question, what is the minimum time dose in nature to positively impact the mental health of college-aged students? And through those studies, through that scoping review, we found that as little as 10 to 15 minutes, uh, two to three times a week, can have a positive, statistically significant, and verifiable benefit. That's wonderful. So going forward, your research will be eventually published. But for the moment, we have some resources that we'll link to in the post that if people are curious, they can check more out and learn a little bit more about uh, children in nature. Yes, um, I co-authored a book uh, that came out from Cornell University Press uh, this past May um, titled Nature Rx, Improving College Student Mental Health. And that's available through all of the normal outlets, uh, including that outlet named after a famous river. <laughs> uh, so people can find that there. Um, also, looking forward in terms of future research projects and papers, one that I'm particularly excited about, another component of the Nature Rx program that I spoke about is a nature prescription program through our Cornell Health Clinic. 
And this past year, 24 health practitioners at Cornell Health included almost 700 nature prescriptions as part of students' electronic health records. And wow. this year, for the first time at Cornell, and I believe at any campus anywhere, uh, we're going to be sending surveys to each student who has been prescribed time in nature um, and will be able to anonymously and confidentially coalesce all that data to really determine uh, the degree to which being prescribed nature as part of your overall health prescription, um, A, uh, is actually being followed, and B, how much impact is that having? Great. Well, I look forward to learning more as everything gets published and we start disseminating the research on sites like research.cornell.edu. And sure. I am very happy that you came today. Thank you very much. And we'll be back next week with another episode of Good Work New York. And that's some Good Work New York. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>